All right, another project, April 1st, 2023. Project for today, and probably tomorrow, is to get this old carburetor out of there. It's got problems with uh, cold starting, flooding, all kinds of junk, and replace it with Holly Sniper EFI. And here it is. Got this a while back, just haven't installed it yet. And uh, also got a fuel tank with an internally mounted um, uh, fuel pump. And hopefully my uh, gas gauge will work now too, because I've run out of gas at least a couple of times, not knowing that I was almost empty, which is a real pain. Anyhow, uh, I'm gonna get started on this and uh, never done it before, so this is a, a new one on me. Um, okay, so far on mine, I only had a, a couple of things I had to take off the carburetor. Um, I haven't taken the fuel line off yet, but I uh, had to disconnect the, the manual choke uh, that I put in. There's a vacuum line that goes to the base of the carburetor right here for me uh, that I've got marked right here. And that's vacuum that is needed for the, the power booster. Um, actually, no, it was for this. Uh, I think that's a choke. Anyway, probably not needed. Anyhow. Uh, this spring goes to the throttle linkage. Uh, let's see what else I just connected. Uh, the PCV valve right here. This hose goes to the base of the carburetor. Uh, so I have to get that hooked back up on the new system. Um, let's see. Other than that. Oh, yeah. And then the vacuum for the, the distributor. That's the most important one. Um, that one plugged into the side over here. So... Now I just gotta take the fuel line off and pull the carburetor up off there. The carburetor's off of there. Four nuts held it on. There they are. There's where it was. So, I don't remember if I put this spacer on there or not. I may have. Uh, I guess I'll probably run it again. So, all right, let me get this throttle body and yeah. stuff. New gasket going down. Fits perfectly. We got the spacer. And another gasket. I think I put that on there because I was having some vapor lock. I don't remember though. I know I did it for the truck. Okay, there we go. So now I'm ready to set the throttle body unit. Down. The instructions say that these uh, nuts holding the uh, EFI unit down are supposed to be torqued to 60 to 80 inch pounds. So I've got this set at 70, split the difference, and to tighten them in a crisscross pattern. Seventy there. All right, kind of hard to get on these, so I'll be right back. All right, got seventy inch pounds on all four nuts. Okay, the next part uh, that I got to do here is uh, install a temperature sensor uh, right here into the intake where there's constant coolant flow. Looks like this is a good place for it right there. I think it'll fit thread wise. And then the next one is to install uh, the oxygen sensor, which looks like I've already got a port for that as well, uh, right, into the, um, right into the exhaust manifold. So hopefully I can use those two places and not have to do any drilling. All right, here we go. Yeah, that couldn't have been simpler. Uh, which concerns me because any, anytime anything's too easy, there's probably <laughs> going to be a problem down the road. Murphy's law. Anyway, so yeah, got the uh, temperature sensor in. Uh, that's a three quarter inch um, in size, you know, nut to get that in. It was seven eighths to get the old one out, uh, which where did I put that right here. So yeah, that was just in the uh, right in the side of the intake manifold. So. This is a 1985 CJ7, so anybody else out there doing it, that's a good place for it right there. So now I'm gonna get to that uh, oxygen sensor right there and uh, get that one put in. Here we go. Okay, out with the old, in with the new. 
So once again, smooth sailing so far. Didn't have to do any drilling or anything like that for the uh, O2 sensor or the coolant sensor. So if you've got my same setup, couldn't be easier. So these will plug into the harness, uh, but I'm not gonna do that right this moment going on. Okay, I got all my vacuum lines hooked up. I've got the uh, distributor vacuum advance plugged in right there with a uh, hose clamp on it. I've got my uh, PCV valve plugged into the back at the base and then my uh, whatever this doohickey is. I don't even know what that thing is. Probably some emissions deal, but anyway, all the there was just three things that I had to get plugged in there. Um, so now, uh, next thing is to get some uh, electrical connections made. Here we go. Okay, I'm gonna stop here for today. Um, found out, you know, after I got the tank out of there and everything, um, that the I knew that the tank was a 20 gallon tank, and uh, thought I could just slip the other, you know, the new gas tank down into the rock guard uh, of it and it would work the only problem is um it doesn't slide down into it because of the design of the tank i'll show you that here in a second uh before i do that i just wanted to mention that now that i've got it out of here what i can do is uh clean up this rust you know get the loose stuff off of there and then spray some rust reformer and get some uh, undercoating in there take care of uh <laughs> take care of uh, some issues there while I'm at it. Um, I pretty much got everything. That's just dirt there, but that's that's already been coated when I um, was doing the body work and everything, but I'll, I'll double check that too and hit it. But anyway, I'll, I'll be able to, since I've got it down, I'm gonna have to wait for a skid plate to come. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and clean this up, get it rust reformed and then painted uh, with some undercoating and that way we can stop all of that. Uh, so looking at the new tank, looking at the new tank, it's, uh, I, I could modify it, I guess, and cut these corners off and let it slip down in the, the old rock guard. Um, but it's just kind of doing a half butted job. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, the tank would be down in, the, in that rock guard, but it'd just be bouncing around, clanging, because I don't, the strap would not fit it. Pro you know, it's just, so I'm going to do this right. So what I did is I ordered the 15-gallon uh, tank OEM skid plate. Actually, it's a little heavier duty uh, made by Crown. That's going to come here in a few days. Um, ordered a strap kit for it so I can strap it to, you know, so everything's in there nice and snug. Um, so... Meanwhile, I'll just, uh, I'll get that cleaned up underneath there, like I said, and, uh, you know, tomorrow I'm going to stop today and then I'll finish doing the wiring. I can get that much done as well. There's, uh, I've got a, um, you know, obviously run power to this, a switched source and, uh, ground and got to run the, uh, the yellow wire to the negative side of the coil and some different things like that. So this will plug into the main harness. I'll get my, uh, uh, controller mounted I'm gonna go ahead and uh, have them have the controller inside the vehicle um, which is right here and it has its own uh, plug-in to the harness but this is what's going to uh, calibrate everything once it, everything's installed and ready to run so uh, there's plenty to do uh, for me to do while I'm waiting for some parts to come um, so I got a, I got a good bit done. Um, I th I'm really looking forward to having it, uh, you know, run off of an EFI system. Uh, can get rid of that right there. I also on the fuel pump, um, you know, took that old fuel line out because I'm obviously not going to use it. And I found a bolt that was able to fit down into the, uh, the connection for the fuel line. It's <laughs> it's not exactly the same thread, but I made it work, if you know what I'm saying. Um, so it's nice and snug in there. And that's just to cap the fuel pump off. You know, I won't ever use that again because you don't need it. Uh, the fuel pump is actually in the, uh, in the gas tank. So I did get the gas tank put together in the sense that it's got the... Uh, 
you know, it has the, uh, the fuel pump down in there, the sending unit and everything, got that all buttoned up. So it's ready to go. Uh, this is the harness for it. There's a gray wire that'll go to power, um, a black wire that goes to ground, and then these other two wires uh, will uh, be connected to the uh, sending or the gas gauge, you know, to, to send the fuel level and so forth. So I'm looking forward to having that fixed as well. So anyway, uh, that's going to wrap it up for today. Um, you can see that I've already tested out my, uh, very lightly tested out my front axle that I finished. Got some mud painted all over the side of the Jeep. I just wanted to lock it in, lock it in and put it in four low and go off road here close to the house. So that's what I did. Um, so yeah, anyway, the, uh, Holly sniper, this is part one, so part two is forthcoming. I'll probably do a little bit of work on it tomorrow, um, but it'll probably come in three stages, so we'll see you guys soon. Later.